committee for what 14 15 months can i please ask members that to comply with the covid 19 social distancing and guiding issued around the building when you leave the room there is no planned fire drill today so if the fire alarm does sound members of staff will guide you safely out the meeting can i also remind members of the committee to ensure that the microphones are switched on when speaking or this will not be picked up in the live stream and if anyone has watched the live stream you cannot hear anything and finally when the meeting is finished can i please ask members of the committee to take the, all the committee papers home with them as we're currently operating a clear desk policy so that's take everything from the desk except the hand gel so that brings on to item one which is apologies for absence there's no apologies chair that's first thank you uh, which takes on to item number two which I'm sure I'm standing down as the chairman and I'd just like to thank all the officers and members for the support over the past two years and it has genuinely been an honour and a privilege to serve as a chairman in what I would say is one of the most important committees on the council. Um, so do we have a proposal for a chairman? Councillor Dennis? Thank you. Yeah, I would like to second that. You. See no other nominations. Um, <clears throat> everyone in favour of that? Eight, 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 four. Any against? Any abstentions? One abstention. So. Mr. Regenson, it's all yours. Chair, can I just call the register? Can you hear me, everybody? Uh, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for. Um, your support in this endeavour. I'll uh, do my very best to be even-handed and, and exhibit oodles of patience, if you like, and we'll see how we go. So I'd just like to pay uh, a tribute to my predecessor, uh, Councillor McNally. He did a, a difficult job, often under trying circumstances. And uh, yeah, it's so, uh, as I say, um, Dan's had to stand down, and uh, but I wish him well. So having uh, done that, we'll move on to the item Sorry, three. Chair. Sorry, Sorry, Chair, can I just call the register? Beg your pardon? Can I just call the register? Yes, of course. Sorry. Thank you. Councillor McNally. Yeah, present. Councillor Edgington. Present. Councillor Aldridge. Present. Councillor Brooks. Present. Councillor Cunnington. Present. Councillor Dennis. Present. Councillor Ayer. Present. Councillor David Hall. Present. Councillor Alex Hall. Present. Councillor jo Jones. Present. Councillor Kemp. Present. Councillor Matthews. Present. And Councillor Swanson. Thank you. That's the register. Thank you, Chair. Yes, right. Thank you for that. Uh, that. So I'll go back to the agenda. Item three, are there any disclosures of interest? Colleagues, please. Councillor Hall. Uh, the first item was discussed at Town Council, but I did not take uh, part in any of the discussions. Uh, so I come with a clear conscience. Thank you. Are there any more disclosures of interest? Councillor McNally. Uh, thank you, Chairman. The one, I'm a member of the drainage board, and two, I'm also, um, the, there is some, on, on both applications on here, the, there's some comments from the AOMB. I am a member of the AOMB, but I come here with an open mind. Right. Councillor Edgington, drainage board declaration. Yes, and myself, drainage board. And myself. Councillor Aldridge. Councillor Swanson, Councillor Ayres. 
I think that's the full complement of drainage board members, is it not? Thank you. Right, fair enough then. So uh, moving on, item four, minutes. Well, the minutes of the two meetings on the 27th of April uh, of this year and the 29th of April have been circulated. Uh, would someone move that they are true record? Is that seconded? Are there any observations? I take it you approve. We please raise your hands. Thank you. Item five is update from Planning Policy Committee, Councillor Matthews. No. Oh, sorry. Councillor Dennis, have you got any? No, there's no updates. No, sorry. No updates from, yeah. from, from, uh, right, okay, moving on. So we now move on to item six, which is the first of the uh, planning applications, which refers to Louth Lama trekking. So who's going to present this? Uh, that's uh, that's me, Chair. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Hopefully you should be able to see it. Uh, right, well, this will be a first. Okay. Can I just check you can all see that presentation? Yes. Can everybody see that? Right. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, so this is the application for the change of use of land to be used for the llama trekking and the construction of a facilities building. The recommendation is for approval. Uh, members will note that there's a uh, supplementary agenda for the item. Um, in brief, it's, uh, it's an update from the applicant's ecologist um, that just advises that they don't expect, expect there to be an adverse impact on the nearby barn owl. Um, and there's been an additional comment received from a group of residents that live on Julian Bower. Uh, there was uh, the additional comments that they've made and some additional commentary summarised summarised in that supplementary. Would you would you like a couple of minutes to read to read that, or are you happy for me to continue, Chair? Would you like a, would, you like, would you like two or three minutes just to read that? Okay, so that you're fully briefed. Are you ready for us to proceed, colleagues? Not yet. Not yet. Okay.
think we're ready for to proceed now, aren't we, colleagues? If the officer. Yeah, would you like the Holy Grail, Chairman, to be honest? Huh? Well, yes, it is, I suppose. It's complimentary. I don't think I've seen one of Ron's with. No. And, and Ron's. Well, it is important that people read that. So, if, you know, if you need a bit more, please. Yeah. I'm fine now, Chairman. Thank you. Okay. I think we're okay now. So, would the officer continue, uh, commence yes. the presentation, please? Of course. Uh, so, this is the um, just a, an aerial view of the site within its context. Um, you've got the the site is this field here, um, along Julian Bower. Um, you've got Horncastle Road and London Road and Upgate here. Um, in a slightly more, uh, slightly more zoomed in version, you can see the ongoing development um, that's, uh, I think it was called Land Off Julian Bower, but it's, a, it's an ongoing residential development here. This field to the west of it also has planning permission for residential development, but it's not yet commenced. Um, there are a cluster of properties along Julian Bower, primarily here, uh, with the nearest dwelling to the site here. Uh, there is an existing stable block just under this pinpoint um, and a couple of small field shelters. The site is actually divided. There is a separate paddock here that is edged in blue on the site plan that you'll see in a minute that's not within the area that the application refers. There is a public footpath that cuts across from this um, uh, from this northeast corner. Uh, runs primarily through this land that is within their ownership, but it's not the application site before cutting across down to this, uh, down to the southwest corner, and then it cuts, um, it then runs southwest across towards the bypass and out towards Tathwell. Uh, you've got the athletics pavilion, um, the uh, allotments are also accessed off Julian Bower as well. Um, I'll just move through the plans very quickly. Um, so this is the this is the site plan. The land in red is the area that is proposed to be changed use. Um, you've got the access to Julian Bower is edged in red as well, and this separate fields that I mentioned about is um, within their ownership, but isn't seeking to be used for the treks. Uh, the proposed site plan shows the existing stable block here. You have the proposed area for the facilities building is here. Um, an area of hard standing for parking and turning is is within here. Some additional fencing and uh, hedging here. Uh, there is a small corral area along with some picnic benches that are proposed as well. And then you've got two existing field shelters. Uh, this line here is the approximate line of the public footpath as it runs through the runs through the site. So this is your proposed building, uh, primarily single story with a little bit of uh, a little bit of first floor um, accommodation within the roof space, as you'll see shortly. Uh, this north elevation faces the uh, existing hedge line onto on Julian Bower, and this uh, south elevation obviously looks out uh, over the over the hills and into the walls. Um, layout's fairly simple. There's a proposed briefing room and classroom with uh, an indoor eating and, and leisure area. Um, facilities there, um, toilet, mudroom, etc., reception area, um, and then on the first floor there's a there's a small area of emergency sleeping accommodation. Uh, just a, a section through to show to show that in context, this the, you've got your small first floor area here, uh, and a proposed visualization. The building is proposed to be timber clad with a green roof. Uh, so on to the site photos. Uh, these are for the entrance to Julian Bower, where it connects with uh, connects with Upgate and London Road. This is looking down Upgate in towards the town, uh, and then over the hill in the other direction, out towards uh, uh, out towards the A16. Uh, on Julian Bower itself, 
Um, this is taken outside of the site. You've got the uh, existing pedestrian access onto the public footpath on the left, and the vehicular access to the south is at the uh, vehicular access to the site. Sorry, is at the far end on the left hand side. Uh, you've got these mature uh, mature tree and hedge boundaries um, along both sides. Looking in the opposite direction, um, even the nearest neighbour on your right here. Uh, Julian Bauer continues towards an S-bend uh, and then out towards um, out, out towards Upgate. And the current ongoing housing development is just to the far side of this hedge on the left here. Uh, looking out towards the site, uh, looking out across the site, then you've got this existing area of bare ground in front of the stable blocks. Um, the fields, uh, the field slopes down and into the valley, and you've got views of the walls across the valley. You can see the picnic barriers or uh, picnic benches are already in situ. Um, here is your existing stable block with the hedgerow behind it, and you can just catch glimpses of the um, the nearest well and beyond. Uh, this is the proposed area for the building. It will sit in in here. You can see the um, the fence that divides the the site with the paddock beyond that's in their ownership as well. Um, again, looking back out across the site, um, you can see the again the fence that runs along the left hand side. This is the area in front of you is proposed to be used for the treks. Uh, from the public footpath, looking towards where the proposed building will be, this is taken. This is taken just inside the uh, just inside the uh, the paddock. Um, the building will sit on the far on the far right, just in in this uh, up against this hedgerow. Um, and again, just to show that you've got these these open views of the walls out in out in all directions, looking south. Um, the public footpath eventually does cross into the the red line site. Uh, this is a view from from that point, looking up the hill. So you've got the existing stable block here. The proposed building will be here, with the roof slope uh, it's, have its lowest point facing you. Um, you can just catch glimpses of the. Um, the housing development in the in the background here. From the bottom of the site looking up again, you can see the existing stable block and the building would be would be uh, next to it. And again, this area is all proposed to be used for for trekking. Uh, and then just from follow the public footpath um, up, you get these uh, these wider views from across the valley. Uh, the site is here. Um, the existing stable block is nestled in nestled in here, and the proposed building will be next to it. You do have some views of the the ongoing development there, and some views of the church spire. Uh, and then, lastly, just a panorama from that same viewpoint that brings in some of the existing housing along uh, Horncastle Road, but just gives the 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 open countryside context for the site. And that is that is the presentation, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. We'll stop right. Sorry. Right. I have some. I've got some speakers here. We get some echo in as well. Apparently. Right. I have um, one, two, three, four speakers in respect to this item. Um, now, before I invite you, Dan, is it asked anything different because of the social distancing? Beg your pardon? I see, right. So we have uh, Claire Manning and Councillor Sue Crew, uh, Councillor Jill Makinson Sanders, and Councillor Sarah Parking uh, as well. So, uh, well, I'll take them in the order in which I have them on the sheet. So the first speaker will be Claire Manning. Thank you. Can you hear me? Is the red light on? In your own time, please. You have three minutes and we'll let you know uh, when you've got 30 seconds left. Thank you. Thank you. The residents of Julian Bower have been concerned throughout the application that the ambitions, true size and scale of this business have been and remain unclear. Large parts of the application form were left blank and a lot of contradictory information was received during the process. We have already seen Louth Llama Trekking advertising the sale of merchandise, themed gifts, manure, parties with music and group bookings as additional revenue streams. 
None of these are covered by the current planning application, but are still being advertised on their website and social media this morning. We have looked at the existing seven other businesses in East Lindsay that already offer encounters with llamas and alpacas. None of them rely solely on trekking experiences. All offer additional services in order to maintain financial viability. Examples include gift shops, birthday hen and stag parties, wedding services, refreshments, and the chance to meet other animals at the same sites. These additional services will vastly alter the anticipated eight vehicle movements quoted in the officer's report. Last summer, Scamblesby Primary School visited the llamas and in a one hour, 41 minute time frame during the visit, CCTV on the lane recorded 14 pedestrians, seven dogs and 28 vehicle movements including two vans and a minibus. Our lane can neither support or sustain this volume, particularly when you consider that there is no public footpath along Julian Bower, and at its narrowest part, the lane has banked sides and is only 2.2 metres wide, meaning there is absolutely nowhere for pedestrians to remove themselves from oncoming vehicles. In the 18 months since the llamas were moved onto the land, the applicant has shown little regard for the planning process breaking all three of the conditions in place to protect local amenity and highway safety. They have also attempted to divert and regularly block access to the public footpath. We are concerned that to control this business and its future growth, there would need to be substantially more conditions added to any approval given, placing a heavy burden on both enforcement and the residents in respect of monitoring and reporting of breaches. We believe that this report has grossly underestimated the true impact of this business in this location and has failed to offer comprehensive protection to residents with the limited proposed conditions. There is sufficient guidance in SP 22 and 23 of the local plan and paragraph 110 of the MPPF for the committee to refuse this application in order to preserve the safety and amenity of residents and pedestrians. We must protect this ANOB location from becoming a noisy and unwanted tourist attraction. And then I'd like to say that I'm joined today by nine of our, the residents from Julian Bower in the other room who I'm speaking on behalf thank of. You. Have you concluded? Uh, yes, I have, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker is Councillor Sue Crewe. Thank you. In your own time, please, and you have three minutes, same conditions apply. Thank you. Good morning. Um, at Loud Town Council, we like to listen to our residents, and they are unanimously against Excuse me. Invitation. It would be helpful to members, I think, if you were to perhaps speak nearer to the microphone. Thank you. Um, I'll just give you some bullet points of the Council's concerns. The building proposed for the site is described as small when it is equivalent size of a three-bedroomed house, and at six metres tall, it will tower over the landscape and block views of the AOMB on which it, the site is located. An emergency sleeping room has been proposed. This is wholly unacceptable and unnecessary for such livestock and has not been necessary in the past few years or more. The llamas have had some successful births with no need for human sleeping accommodation. The council were concerned to note that within the documentation it is mentioned the approval of the proposals will result in a very limited increase in the use of the road. However, the council and the residents question this given the proposals to provide birthday parties, refreshment facilities for walkers and community events. The roadway is a single lane on paid farm track with no footpath and is maintained by the residents at their own expense. The track is totally, totally unsuitable for the recently increased and future anticipated traffic for what is a commercial venture. There will be buses and feed deliveries at the least. The junction of Julian Bower with London Road is extremely dangerous, being located on the brow of a hill with very poor visibility with often speeding traffic. This application proposes that a gate across Julian Bower be installed, which would also block the path for the further down the path. This application would ne necessitate the use of floodlights, which would be a nuisance and source of light pollution. Approval of this application will set a dangerous precedent, as we are afraid that it will lead to other applications for residential dwellings and other businesses on the site. Would health and safety laws be breached by allowing llamas in the vicinity of people eating picnics? The council were also concerned that the site is located on, in the AOMB. The council should be taken on how such an important area would be protected and how biodiversity would be properly managed across the site. Further comments from other organisations such as the Lincolnshire World Countryside Service, the Lincolnshire Wildlife Trust, plus those from the historical officer, 
all pertain to the site being of ecological and scientific interest, and this has not been covered. Loud Town Council are concerned that the business has been running for a number of years without the correct permissions. It believes that these proposed to constitute over-intensive use of a site sold for horses, which has resulted in the residents of Julian Bow being subjected to constant upset and disruption since commercial activity on the site commenced. The amount of passing traffic has increased exponentially. This has damaged the surface of the road. Cars are parking on the road, blocking it, and are using people's driveways to turn around and cause a nuisance. This could endanger lives as emergency vehicles would struggle to pass. The number of pedestrians using the road also increased significantly, and there is no footpath on it. I would urge you to object to this application. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now, I've got indicated here two councillors to speak, Councillor Jill Makerson sanders and Councillor Sarah Parkin. Are they in the... Yes, thank you. It's strange after all this time, isn't it? We get used to... Uh working remotely, like first day at school. Hello, Jill. Right, uh, right, Councillor uh, uh, Makinson Sanders, as a local member, you have five minutes to address the committee. Thank you, I am the ward in member, actually, yeah. In your own time. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, this application, oh, good morning, everyone. Sorry. This application came about after residents complained that a business was illegally being operated on land which was sold to the present owners with a permission simply for private stables and no commercial use. That condition was imposed originally for good reason. This site is not sustainable and for such use at the end of a narrow private track. The enforcement team required the applicants, therefore, to submit a planning application. And this has been ongoing for some 18 months. And throughout this time, according to information on the website, 15-year-old student Miss Ewing has run the Llama experience from this site in the AOMB. The site is accessed along what is a potholed, single-track private road without passing places. I've measured the width of the roadway, and at its widest, it's approximately nine feet. The entrance, which was badly worn, was recently resurfaced at the cost uh, after... All the um, existing residents contributed to the cost. There's no scope for widening this track. At the entrance are high banks. Visibility is poor onto what is known locally as the London Road. And this entrance is particularly concealed to vehicles driving north into Louth on a pronounced slope and on a, on a, a bend. And speeding on this stretch of road is a continual concern of local residents. And we've tried to control this with periodic use of reactive speed lights uh, lent by Louth Town Council. I was a member of the recent tourism scrutiny group, which reported to full council last October. We agreed we were very keen to encourage high quality tourist attractions to the area. The aim of our tourism strategy is to increase employment and economic prosperity. Opening a tourist attraction at the end of a 400 meter long private track is not the quality tourism this council is aiming for and fails to encourage use of the facilities in the town centre. Extravehicular usage is also not in line with our agreed carbon reduction agenda. There's no footpath linked to the town centre and no buses past the, bit, um, the bottom of the lane. There's a dangerous conflict between vehicles and pedestrians for much of the private road and the disabled in particular would be placed in particular danger. I've not seen disability addressed at all within this application. An increase in any traffic on Julian Bower presents a risk. The business's website states they can offer children's birthday parties for six to a dozen children. and uh, Not one local parent would walk the 400 metres to the site from the main road. Every child would be ferried by car. Twelve cars would drive in. There wouldn't be adequate space for them all to turn around at the same drop-off time. And uh, they would then drive out again. That's 48 extra traffic movements for just one party. Unfortunately, no conditions can stop anyone parking on this private road and no conditions are put forward to limit the daily usage of the attraction throughout the season. The site has already attracted midweek visits from a local school and a training centre for people with learning difficulties. And these visitors have been taken by a minibus which has been parked on this single track lane, much to the consternation of residents. The application states that the owners would also like to provide the opportunity for walkers to grab refreshments. However, there's been no consultation about opening such a facility in the open AMB countryside. Building a centre here would entail heavy vehicles making deliveries 
and the necessary day-to-day -day servicing of the site would require similar extra usage too. And I've actually witnessed myself transit some bigger vehicles actually backing down to the main road and onto it, and I've been open-mouthed at the danger to innocent road users. One of the residents who is a local vet of over 40 years' experience on occasion has carried out work for this council, and his evidence is that llamas are species native to the Andes and do not require on-site supervision. In his professional view, there's no requirement for emergency accommodation for their health and well-being. And as the Techni Llama Farms website clearly shows, these animals are easily transportable. He states that the animals carry the E. coli germ and any food sales or picnicking carries a health risk. He has on occasion had to make complaints about animal welfare on the site. And indeed this week he reports that the male has bilateral um, conjunctivitis. He's regularly voiced concerns about the fencing as the animals frequently get out. Indeed, on a recent occasion, it was only thanks to the residents that straying animals did not escape onto the main road. And I'm sad to say uh, that to have to report that this site has attracted antisocial behaviour over the last two years. And I've had a number of meetings with the local police to share my concerns. They're aware of the situation and have had to visit the site on a number of occasions. I'm all for tourism, I'm all for enterprise, but it must be in the right place, not at the end of, of a single track private loan. Well, thank you for that. Um, now then, we've got um, Councillor Sarah Park, and are you going to address us from... The... Okay, then fine. Can I just ask, do... I'll switch that off. Do... Are you going to ask us questions? Because I was going to go back in the room so I could hear what was going Yes, on. unless I'm advised the contrary, when all the speakers have well, made the... Well, just stand in the corridor. Yeah, Sorry, I'll... Um... You can see, yeah, by all means, yeah. Very frankly. Oh, wait. In your own time, you, you, you have three minutes, Councillor Parkin. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Committee. I'm here as a concerned East Lindsay Councillor also, with a keen interest in this application. Julian Bower is a glorious asset to Louth and the residents who own it, and it was, must remain so. Business diversification should be supported, but not if it adversely re affects residents and materially damages their daily life. This could be a bright and viable business for Louth, but this is entirely in the wrong place. Saying yes to this not only detrimentally impacts the, these residents, but stifles the business itself from growth. It can never grow at the bottom of an unadopted lane. This application results in a serious and severe loss of amenity to the residents as the owners of the rightful owners of this beautiful and unspoilt lane. They are its legal owners and we have a duty to protect their rights. The construction traffic itself and the increased vehicle usage this application will entail will result in damage to Julian Bower. We have a precedent of protecting unadopted roads in the interests of residents. In application N1050003916, we put in conditions that prohibited construction traffic accessing that site via the unadopted stretch of Mount Pleasant. Such a condition is not possible here as there is no other access. The only way to protect residents is by refusal. The lane is totally unsuited for construction and for tourist traffic and the, and the increased traffic flow that will result from servicing the business. The residents will also suffer, suffer loss of amenity due to the inadequate parking. Car parking will not be enough for the number of guests to the larger events and parties that the applicants are advertising currently. Assuming the, 12, the applicants' cars are also on site, this only leaves three spaces for at least 12 guests, and they will park on Julian Bower itself because there is nowhere else to go. This will impede traffic movements, cause damage to the road surface, and this will all be at the social and the economic costs of the residents themselves. Paragraphs 108B and 110C of the MPPF state, we must ensure that safe and suitable access to the site can be achieved for all users, and we must minimise scope for conflicts between pedestrian cyclists and vehicles. This route is well used and well loved by all, by all of those categories, and it is also loved by the allotment holders and the residents themselves. This private, this private rural lane can in no way be suitable as, a tour, as access for tourist business if they have a desire for growth. If they don't have a desire for growth, then the harm this application brings causes to the harm this application brings causes to the residents does not outweigh the benefits. 
I implore this committee to refuse. Right? The application brings minimum economic impact to Louth while bringing maximum disruptions to the residents involved. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that, Councillor Parkin. Now, as is customary, can the two other speakers come back into the chamber so that members can then have the opportunity to question them? Councillor Edgerton, can I just check that I'm OK here still, that we still meet the social distance? As far as I know, yes. Is that yeah, okay? that's fine, Thank yes. You. There's a point of order here, Chairman, because the allotments are only accessed off Julian Bower by steep. Yeah. Oh, have you done that? Well, uh, well, yeah. it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. When, when, yeah. when the two other speakers yeah, are back I in the just, room, then members will have the opportunity to question you all to, to before we go actually that. debate the matter. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I just no, thought it's, it's important. It's to a bit strange. That. It's 18 months since we've been yeah, here. Yeah, you know, it is, so isn't it? <laughs> Right, thank you. Right now, colleagues, uh, you've got the opportunity to address the, the four speakers. If you would just indicate who you who you're posing the question to, it would be helpful. Councillor Dennis. Yeah. Jill. Oh, OK, thank you very much. I'd like to address all four councillors that we have here today. First of all, I'm very disappointed that the applicants are not here, to be honest. It would have been nice to have got their view. The highways, I'm, I'm not too fussed about the highway problems on this on this application because we have Lincolnshire County Council highways are the experts and if they say it's okay, as far as I'm concerned, it's okay. My, my big problem and what I want to talk to all four councillors about is the effect of the neighbours, the amenity loss for the neighbours. That's the big thing here for me. This sounds like they bought into a, a way of life and, and basically this application is going to stop that way of life because in, because of the lane, etc. And and am I true that the, if you've got nine residents here, that, that's got to mean a lot for those people that, that actually come. Uh, one question I'd like to ask the, the planning officer is there, there were 30 letters. Were, were they generic letters or were they 30 individual letters of complaint? Can Any somebody answer that? Well, can, first of all, Councillor Dennis, you addressed that question to all four speakers, didn't you? Oh, well, four speakers and the officer, really. Yeah, so can any, can any officer well, shed they, some light they, on those were letters? Were they generic? Had somebody written a letter and everybody's just gone and signed it? Or were they... And that's, that's the all part... All the residents. Oh, OK, which... All, all the residents did this individually because they all feel very strongly about it. Right. So can I just ask, then, that uh, all four speakers... That, Councillor Dennis has addressed to you. So who would answer, I'd like to speak first? Councillor Parkin. Thank you. Sid. It's a learning there we curve go. again. There we go. <laughs> um, I, I feel, I just want to touch really briefly if Councillor about the highways issues. Um, I spoke to the highways officer who um, looked at this um, I spoke to her yesterday just to double check and I think her disappointment is is that the recommendation that highways did put on we have not included in our conditions Pardon? yeah yeah so in in yeah so, so yeah council I need to speak to and ask you a question about highways before you can answer that uh, as a committee you've come to ask I've come to ask yeah. you questions. You need to give me the answers to the questions and not go over to all the other things that's not yeah. we can't do. What that. we're looking for is is questions from the members and answers from the speaker that, rather it. than sort of like a general not debate. Another extra three minutes. You follow me. All right. Please. Thank you. Apologies for that. It was just I, th I thought you'd said something about highways and your initial yeah. um yeah. Okay. Sorry, I apologize for that. Um in terms of the loss of amenity um to these residents. I can absolutely categorically say, and Claire will say the same as will Jill, that 100% of the residents are opposed to this. And we have all spent a considerable amount of time up there, a considerable, considerable amount of time gathering the evidence and looking at it. And I do not believe, absolutely do not be, believe that there is a way that we can mitigate the harm of this application to the residents on that lane. There is not a way of doing it. The lane itself does not facilitate that in any way. Did anybody else uh, like to answer uh, Councillor Dennis's query or should we move on to another councillor to ask a question? 
I, I could give you a bit more detail. The the front we didn't get a photograph of the front bit of the lane. The front bit of the lane um, was very 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 badly potholed, and the residents all clubbed together to resurface that recently. And they feel that extra traffic will they'll end up the, the road surface will crack up again, and um, and basically they'll be forking out Thank yet you. again. Thank you. Right. Okay, Councillor Jones, your question. Who are we going to address it to, uh, Councillor Jones? Yeah. Sorry, I think I'm on. I'm going to address it to uh, you because I think you can probably speak for the other ones. Uh, th where are these residents? Are they actually living along the lane? Where's the nearest resident to the actual llama factory is the first thing I want to ask. The second thing was who owns the lane? Uh, it, it, does the Lama people own any part of it? Um, so those two to start with. Um, the the resident. Um, yep, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. Um, the the residents live in. Um, I don't think it was shown on the map. As you drive into the lane, there's one, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The nearest one is um, uh, an old, uh, where an old farmer lived and his family now still continue to live. And uh, the private, because it's a private road, ownership is always, <laughs> I don't know, I think that's a civil matter, not, not necessarily a planning matter, but everybody owns a share of the road as a private road including the llama. Uh, well they will they will have access over it um i unless i saw the deeds i wouldn't actually be able to answer that question hand on heart um completely fairly but um they will have they will be able to to go over the land but not necessarily have any ownership of it at all Thank you. The next question I want to ask, neil can you thank you uh, it's a bit of a bind, but we'll, have to, we'll get back is into the swing of things. Is that on, folks? Yeah. yeah. Um, you said that this building is going to tar over the area. Can you see from the lane the existing stables, and how much bigger is this new building than the existing stables? The um, the stables are just single storey, and the stables are single storey, and the new proposed building is two stories and it's flat at the back it's a and then slopes down towards the the front of the building so from the uh, houses opposite that are being built on julian bower they will just see a six story great big block i mean a six meter six meter not six stories <laughs> no because the hedge is higher thank you well you can, uh, well yeah the, the residents be able to tell you better than me. I beg your pardon, sorry. Depends on the season. Right. Uh, I've got more, I've got no, have you finished, Count? Yeah. The loud uh, lady as well is, are you, are, why are you all uh, uh, so against this business developing and improving the uh, tourism in the area? We're not against tourism, we're not against businesses setting up, it's just that this is a, um, an a, it's in the AOMB. It's a um, really un impractical place for that. That field has been a um, just a horse paddock for many, many years that had very little traffic to it. I can understand the frustration of the residents that have all this extra traffic going along, as um, the lady there said about some of the traffic that was really bad um, earlier in the year because they've already started some of these functions without the permission for the building. Thank you. Councillor David Hall. Thank you. Okay, um, I have a couple of questions um, to officers and also the uh, the panel. Um, you said this uh, the Lama Farm has actually been in operation for the last two years. What licences have they actually been running under? Who, who are we addressing that to, uh, Councillor Hall? Whoever can answer it. Every one of them. Exactly. Who yeah. is again? Whoever can answer the question yeah. for me. Uh, who would like to answer that? Thank you. Can you hear her? Excuse me. 
Yeah, I beg your pardon, I'm sorry. <laughs> the acoustics aren't the best will in the world. No, sorry, I think I turned it on and off again in one movement. Please, thank you. Um, so it's our understanding that the applicant purchased the field 18 months ago and moved the llamas onto the site within two weeks of purchasing the land. Um, when we became aware of the business, um, enforcement proceedings took place. And as part of that, the applicant was asked to pursue an animal license which took um, a process of about six months for them to achieve because um, they had to meet certain conditions in order to have the license awarded. It wasn't done immediately. But that we understand that that license has now been in place since November. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there have been objections from the vet that I mentioned in my um, statement um, because... <laughs> A lot of the com uh, we're, we're finding it difficult to find out an awful lot of the conditions and the fencing conditions have not been complied with adequately because the llamas keep getting out. There are good reasons for llamas getting out. I could bore you for hours with um, bits about llamas, but they go out at different times of the year to look for food. Um, they don't. They are pack animals, so they don't tend to stray. But there are good reasons why they. Do they're looking for food and so forth in the winter and for water as well and that's really why they get out but um so we do have a big question mark about animal licensing thank you are there any more questions of our speakers have you got another question councillor hall i'm sorry i can't hear you properly I think I'm to right <laughs> sorry um also um you said there was no disabled access to. Uh, sorry, I've got to keep this on. I, I don't care if anybody can hear me. Um, there's no disability access at all to this site, is there? So less uh, lower mobility, um, disabled, uh, other forms of disabled access aren't actually on the site either for actually running a business. Who's going to answer that? Yeah. So there's no public footpath up Julian Bower. Um, the public footpath starts at the entrance to the Llama Field and goes across to Tathwell. So there's no actual formal pedestrian access along Julian Bower at all. And at its narrowest point, Julian Bower is only 2.2 metres wide. So there isn't even room to add a footpath. So in terms of um, for a wheelchair user, for example, they would have to come up Julian Bower illegally by not using a footpath and travel the length of the 400 metres, um, which I would say half of it is unmade up, um, so half of it's tarmacked and half of it is unmade up ground. So they'd be travelling along a 400 metre length without a footpath. So there's that. Does that answer your access question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Have you concluded, yeah. Councillor Hall? The, there's definitely a conflict between. Um, because it's such a narrow lane, taking one vehicle up there, there's hardly any room on either side. The hedges drape over the, um, the track as well, which limits it either, um, to a further extent. But I had a mother in a wheelchair. I wouldn't have been able to wheel my mother over the lumpy ground in the what I would call the second half of that track. It would, it, I think she'd have fallen out, to tell you the truth. But I, I think anybody who was blind or partially sighted would really be troubled um, going up there. Thank you. Right, are there any more questions, Councillor Cunnington, and who are you going to address that to? Thank you, Chair. Is the mic on? Pardon? Is the mic on? Yeah, your mic's yeah. on, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, it's to the second speaker, and if obviously you can't get the right answer to Jill then, please. Um, just for clarity on the road, um, because there's been a lot about it, when and to what cost was it last maintained by the residents, please? Who's going to answer that? The second second speaker, I think, first brought it up, or if not, Jill brought it up. If you're happy for me to answer it, I can answer it. So as a resident, we um, all contributed um, to having the lane resurfaced two years ago. Um, I from memory, I think the cost was in the region of two and a half thousand pounds, but we only did the bottom, um, I would say, 
I was thinking of it in metres, it, it wouldn't be more than 16 metres or so at the bottom of the lane um, because the cost of doing the whole lane was prohibitive. We just did the bottom section. Um, and that section also, it hasn't come up actually, is, is on a steep incline. So it gets potholed quickly. Um, and it was just that section that we did for safety so that as cars are coming down the lane, particularly in winter um, and in autumn when it's covered in leaves, because it's not covered for road sweeping either, um, that section gets really slippery. So it was just that bottom section we did and it cost us £2,500 two years ago. Thank you. Uh, the, the road had been severely potholed because the, um, I think you saw on the plans, there was a, there was a development um, on the other side of the hedge in Julian Bar. The builder mistakenly was using that for access to start with and that sport the road even more. When he realised that that hedge had to stay in its place and he couldn't use that road anymore, um, that was when I think the, the residents then um, resurfaced the road. Uh, but it was it was hugely damaged by building lorries and delivery lorries um, going up there. But it, it is very rough. Uh, well, the first bit isn't rough, but I go up there quite frequently and it's, it is a rough surface and it is very potholed once you get over the bit that, the, that they have resurfaced. Thank you. Right, are there any more questions of our four speakers? No? In which case, unless they've changed the rules, <laughs> as, as, the, as, as the member, could you go and retire to the members' lounge, please? I, I was going to sit with the residents. Oh, OK, yeah. And uh, if, if you remain in the public gallery, that's correct, isn't it? And then we'll open the debate. Right, colleagues, um, you've heard the, the speakers, you've had the presentation. Who would like to uh, open the batting, so to speak? Councillor Matthews? Can I just ask some questions of the officer, please? I beg your pardon? Ask some questions of the officer. Yes, indeed, yes. Is he up there? I think Sorry, it would yeah. be helpful. Oh, Can't thank because thank some you. of the, you know, I think we need to get closer to the microphone because often the acoustics aren't all that good in here. And it's important that we hear the debate and, and the responses. Um, can, can we just have a look um, at the parking area? that's on the site and how you access it. Is, does one of the maps show that? Yeah, just bear with me. I'll um, uh, I'll bring up some, uh, share my screen again. Right, so. Uh, this, this is the aerial aerial plan. You can see Julian Bauer, uh, Julian Bauer here. Uh, you've got the S bend, um, and then the access is is in this far corner. Um, the the area of hard standing proposed will cover this area in front of the stables and this this area here in front of the uh, in front of the proposed building. There will be a parking and turning area. Uh, I think. From memory without going without going back through the documents it can accommodate five or six vehicles and, and you come direct off the road do you uh yes so there's there's an existing existing field gate in this corner here um so it, it's right at the end of julian bauer the, the lane doesn't go any further um okay um, and oh, sorry can i just also ask how much um seating is in the refreshment area please Roughly, or how? What size the refreshment area is? Uh, so, the this 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 variation of the plan that you're that you're looking at is a is a different design to the one that was originally proposed and that was in place when the outline statement was submitted. Um, this this proposal includes this this indoor eating and leisure area, which has got a which has got a small sink, but doesn't have any other kitchen facilities proposed. Um, but it's it's approximately a, a third of the building. And what's the floor space of the building? Um, it's eight metres by 16, so um, bear with me while I do a bit of maths. Um, that, that's OK, actually. It gives me an idea. Thank you. OK. Any more que questions, please? Uh, Councillor Jones, followed by Councillor Dennis. 
Yeah, I, I wanted to ask the officer, please. The speakers have told us that there's eight or nine people actually living on this lane that are going to be affected. When I look at the map, I can actually only see three houses. How, how near or where are the actual residents, these nine residents that are complaining? Uh, do they actually live on the lane? Yes, yeah, so your your closest dwelling is is here, um, which is is right up against the the so this this paddock here is the one in the in the blue ownership in the blue line, and then the nearest neighbour is here. You have um, two or three dwellings here, and then the rest are in a cluster on this side of the lane up here. Um, I, I couldn't say exactly how many any houses are on there, um, but I, I would I would hazard a guess that it was about eight or nine. Thank you. And the other question I want to ask you is about the this building itself. Uh, they're telling me that you can't actually see the stable that exists. How much bigger is this new building against the stable that is already there? Um, bear with me. Let me just track down that height. Let me just find. So um, this is the photo that I think is perhaps going to be most most relevant for your question you've got the the hedge along the hedge along the left hand side there and the stable is the stable is behind that um but if you just bear with me i will just stop presenting briefly while i just track down the um just track down the measurements Sorry, it doesn't look like the exact measurements are labelled on the plan. I can, if you if you want to move on, I can I can go away and measure it and come back to it. But I think it's I think it's somewhere between five and a half and six metres from from memory. Um, yeah. So is it significantly higher than the existing stables? Is that what you're saying? Uh, or will it yes, be the, by that hedge? The it, it will be visible from the lane. It will be visible. Um, it will be visible above the hedge. The hedge, I guess, is approximately. Approximately about four meters high, um, so I would expect that you would have you would have some views of the um, you would have some views of the top of the building. But obviously, it's a it's a mono pitch building, so it's just going to be um, it's just going to be the the roof slope at its highest part. So um, let me just let me just show bring that bring that up again. That's enough for me. Thank you. Have you finished, Councillor Jones? Councillor Dennis, you want to? No, Councillor Jones covered what I wanted to say. Right. Who wants to answer that then? Yeah. Um, the, the, there's been some sort of discussions on the, the private road issue and the highway issue. With regards to the Highways Authority, they can only comment onto the point where it joins the, the public, the, the private road. So their assessment's going to be on the turning into it, that kind of thing, and the use. They can't comment on the use of the private road simply because it's out of their jurisdiction. Regards the maintenance of the private road, um, as the councillor indicated, it's often re referred to in the title deeds that whoever lives along that road will, will contribute so much proportion to the maintenance. However, the owner, the applicant, will also have a right of access to use that private road as well. So when you're looking at this from a planning committee perspective, I'd very much advise you that the use of the private road falls very much in civil, the civil realm, civil law. There is an argument in civil law that you can use a civil, a private road, road and intensification of use is then too much. That's a civil, but as planning committee, I would steer you away from that assessment simply because it falls outside of your jurisdiction because we can't comment on use, civil use of a road, how many times it's used. You can concentrate on the amenity level and the effects on amenity, but I think when you're looking at the road and the private road, it's a very complicated area and it does. One of the negatives of living on a private road is the civil rights and who uses it and the maintenance, and it's very unpleasant sometimes. Obviously, again, the benefits that it's not a public road. 
but there are obviously rights of access and rights of use to whoever owns land down there and there's also a public right of way that appears to connect there where the public will be using the private way as well so in terms of the issues you may have with the public the private road i'd steer you away from the civil matters and more towards looking at amenity if that is what you're minded to look at not who owns it what proportion maintenance that kind of thing thank you Richard, using my yeah. Can I just ask, will um, the owner of the new site, like you've obviously just said, you've said they've got access, but will there be any sort of contributions from them required? It's not for us to get involved, but would they be responsible for any sort of repairs to the road, or are they just an access? That very much depends on the title deeds, what's specified in the easements, and, and when they've purchased the property. It's usually detailed in there, and, it, and it's again, it, it's not for us to to look into that because it, it's a civil matter. Thank you, Councillor Brooks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, it's just a question, really, perhaps to the officer about the emergency accommodation. It, what is the requirements there? Could it be used every day of the year, um, kind of thing? So I'm just looking for clarity. It says emergency, but what what's the situation? Will the officer respond to that, please? Yeah, yeah. So the 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 condition was slightly revised. The is in on the supplementary agenda condition condition thirteen. Um, will will seek to limit that accommodation. It's proposed in the outline statement that it will be used to provide um, to only be used when there is when there's a medical emergency. My understanding is that as a result of their license, they can't take the animals off site. Um, and so any any emergency medical care needs to be needs to occur at the site and it's for it's for those instances. Um, there is some reference in the outline statement to using it to care for um, to, to feed to feed young animals um, if there is any um, if there are any young animals born there that, that are rejected. But again, the um, it, it should only be used in be used in those emergency circumstances and the the condition seeks to seeks to secure that and has a monitoring requirements they keep a they keep a register of of who stayed there when and why thank you um, yes. um just regards sort of sort of llamas in general and i mean I, I, and there was a comment that the, the vet sort of said that, that it's not necessary to have a sort of overnight presence but in planning terms, so looking at the planning history of how inspectors have treated llamas, it's all on case by case basis, depending on the case that's the, the, the business case that's brought forward. But it has been widely accepted by inspectors in planning law that the breeding of llamas is actually quite complicated. The young can be rejected, and there are permissions being granted where you, there's been accommodation and permanent accommodation for the breeding of llamas, for example. And I think, as the officers just, just stated, the condition does restrict the use of that. So I'm, from a legal perspective, I have no concerns with the wording of the condition that's been revised. Thank you. Councillor Eyre. I see on the plans that there's, there are toiletry facilities uh, envisaged in this application. Can you tell me, I can't imagine it... Uh, joins the main sewage how, how are they going to deal with that is it a septic tank arrangement hmm. uh i think andy might potentially want to to come in here because it's um we did have some brief discussions before committee about potentially looking at including a including another condition um there is no um there's no details included in the application about how that would be uh, about how waste wastewater from the building would be dealt with, I, I would assume it would be by package treatment plant. Um, but if if committee were if committee so wish, we could we could include a condition that required details of that to be agreed. Okay. Yeah. Does answer your question, Catherine? Yes. Could I have another one? I, yes, I'm please, a bit sir. concerned about this emergency uh, accommodation. You can carve 200 cows uh, without having to have a and it's such a facility on site. I, it seems to me a bit overkill that this should, this seems to be moving away from the llama business to potentially uh, a permanent structure. Is there any reason why they couldn't have a porter cabin 
that would accommodate their requirements until they get off the ground. Uh, and obviously, if they've only had the the uh, the land for 18 months, they haven't got three years accounts of profit, profitable trading to uh, mm -hmm. put forward to support their case, which would be the case uh, if you had a field of strawberries and wanted to erect a dwelling. Yeah, well, that's an interesting observation. Any more uh, comments before we move on? Councillor Aldridge. Thank you, Chairman. Just to ask, is the fresh water on that site? Can you answer that, please? Yeah. Uh, not the not that I'm aware of. There are no um, there are no existing buildings. I wouldn't imagine the stable has got a connection. Um, I, I don't know how the existing houses along Julian Bower um, get their fresh water. There is a house in close proximity, so if they um, uh, assuming they're they're not on private water supply, then then I would assume that there is there is a possibility to connect to that. If they needed to they needed to include it. Um, there um, there there are no there are no provisions for that included within the application. But as a as a general rule, how they connect and provide those services is not something that we would seek to seek to condition for most applications. Thank you. Councillor Aldridge. Thank you, Chairman. If I can come back. Um, I've actually walked that footpath. My wife walked it about uh, four or five weeks ago with a friend from Louth, and a llama was, was actually out, had escaped. Um, I think we must consider the lack of amenity for the residents. And I know uh, there are, because I've walked it, I know there are about uh, eight or nine properties up there. Um, I'm very concerned about the, the width of the road because emergency services would be find it very difficult to, to get up there if there was a, uh, a problem. And therefore, I would like to propose that this application is refused. Okay. Now, Councillor Dennis, followed by Councillor Hall. Thank you. And I, I am happy to second that. Totally on the amenity issue, the amenity of residents. And now it comes to light, there's no water. That's going to have to be brought on site. We don't know where the sewage is. I, I'm, I'm not comfortable. Councillor Air alluded, you know, the viability of the business. But to me, I agree with, with Councillor Aldridge, this is going to be impossible if it does grow. It's going to be impossible for it not to impact on those eight or nine residents who are here today. And, 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 and trust me, I am totally pro-business. If I could find a way around this, you know, to, to enhance the business of Louth and the Walls, and because, you know, we don't want to get stuck in the trap of an area of natural beauty, the, the, the only problem with area natural beauty is that the people who live within it don't want anybody else to see it but them. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I do believe that the, that the amenity issue is the most important thing and is, is the key to this. And I don't think would, down that narrow lane, I don't think anything could work down there, to be honest. And I think for the amenity of the residents, it would, it would totally impact on their lives. Thank so you. I'd like to second Councillor Aldridge with that. Right. Councillor Hall. Okay. Right. So, a um, couple of things. It's been proposed and seconded that the application be refused. Now, we we need the, the refusal to be based on, on on obviously planning criteria. So, what uh, what are you going to what reason are you going to give not to support the application? The effect on the residents. Right. It would have, have an adverse effect on the resident, the amenity of the residents. Is that basically what you're saying? Yeah, Chairman, thank you very much. I, yeah. I know what members are saying, but it'd be, uh, I think it needs that little bit more clarity in terms of exactly how you think it, if it would be harmful to amenity in exactly what way. Uh, I think that's that's necessary if members are going to consider refusal. On so that what, you, what you're saying is that, that that refusal needs to be fleshed out a bit. It needs more more definition rather than 
simply that it's going to be, have an adverse effect on the residents. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, if, if, if members are minded to, uh, um, to uh, um, got concerns about impact on, on local residents, that's fine. But I think we need to understand and the reason, any reason for refusal has to be clear about exactly what that harm would be. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, it needs to be. Councillor Matthews. Um, just I'm concerned about um, the parking. So if you've got two people working there, they've taken up two car parking spaces and there's only car parking spaces for five people. You know, that's not going to sustain a business and it's going to mean that people are going to be parking on the road. So I do think the amenity really does need looking at. So is there any more comments before I put this to the vote? Would you like it? Um, so, so listening to sort of members' comments, um, we've got that the, the basically the over-intensification of use of the site would lead to a negative impact on neighbourhood amenity, and that's from the comings and goings of vehicles. And then you count, uh, as members are also concerned that there's inadequate parking on site, which may also result in a negative effect on the amenity of neighbours as well. And pedestrians for the people resident now for their safety walking down that single narrow road. Right. Have you got that, Angela? <laughs> Councillor Swanson? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Jim, can you use your team? Yeah, I'll do that. Um, I've been listening to all of this and, and, and I feel very concerned that the residents um, uh, really need some help here. And, and when you come to think, nobody's even mentioned uh, in what we've been talking about, the fact that two vehicles might have to cross between one place and the other. And so when you're talking about amenity, the, uh, the effect on the residents' amenity of the road, for example, right, it would be a nightmare for them if they wanted to, if the people that, they, that are the nearest to the to, to where the the application for the for the stables is uh, to to have to decide how on earth that they're going to get out to the main road and how many vehicles are they likely to incur and where are the parking places the the effect on the amenity value of the of the of, of the Julian Bar is completely messed up. And I think that that's the, one of the biggest things is the effect of the use of the of the Julian Bar on the residents of the Julian Bar. Pure and simple. There are things like noise. There are th there are things like uh, um, stray animals. There are things, all sorts of things. And you can just lump that under the word general amenity. But specifically, my concern is that that that. Lane is a disaster if this application goes ahead. Right, I think we've had a, a thorough debate on this. Um, now, it was proposed by Councillor Aldridge, correct, and seconded by Councillor Dennis that the application be refused for the fo following grounds, which... Um, can I just check, Chairman? Andy, are you happy with the, the content so far of, of the reason for refusal? Yeah. Is, it, is, you out, is Andy, everybody, yes, sorry, everybody clear about what they're going to vote for? Okay, right. Those in favour of refusal, please indicate. That's 12, Chairman. And one abstention. And one abstention. Then in which case the proposition has been lost and it's been refused. Thank you. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I need to leave the meeting. I'm sorry. I've got to go and pick my granddaughter up. So I do apologise. No, I no, thank you for your attendance. I didn't realise until I've been summoned by my granddaughter. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Councillor Dennis. Well, well, we've been at this now an hour and a quarter. Did anybody want a five-minute comfort break? Yes, please, sir. Yeah, I, I can see the look on your face, even through that mask. Agony. Oh, <laughs> Excuse me, Chair, we're still live. We're still live on the screen. Um, Joe's just coming back to put. The, we'll come back and put it on uh, on pause for you. Okay. I'm not quite sure. I mean, surely.